Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to chapter 6 of the video series. From the start of the video series until now, we have been learning the physics of solar cells. But one equally important knowledge that we need to know is how solar cells are made. A good manufacturing process will ensure lower cost and higher efficiency solar cells. So this is why it is very important to learn them. This video series is proudly sponsored by RS Grassroots Education. You can refer to the Design Smart article link below to find out more materials related to this video. The most basic raw material of silicon solar panel comes from a naturally occurring material called quartz or silicon dioxide. So the question that we really want to answer in this video is how are we going to turn quartz into a commercial solar panel? To digest this, this chapter is divided into two parts. The entire manufacturing process of solar panels can be broken down into four main phases. In this video, which is chapter 6.0, we will cover the first and second phases which is to turn quartz to solar-grade silicon and then to silicon wafer. In the next video, which is chapter 6.1, we will learn how to process silicon wafers into solar cells and then to solar panels. Now, let us start with phase 1. The first phase is to transform quartz into solar-grade silicon. The goal of phase 1 is to remove impurities from quartz, which is silicon dioxide, such that we have solar-grade silicon. Any impurities may induce threats for defect-assisted recombination. There are two main processes in phase 1. First, we have carbothermic reduction. Carbothermic reduction means reducing something with carbon at elevated temperatures. In the process, Carbon is introduced as a reducing agent to reduce silicon dioxide into silicon. Carbon and silicon dioxide are fed into an electric arc furnace. The electric arc furnace heats carbon and silicon at about 1900 degrees Celsius. This process expels carbon monoxide, leaving us with liquid crude silicon that flows out of the furnace. Once it solidifies, we have what is called metallurgical grade silicon. Metallurgical grade silicon is only about 98% pure. To qualify for solar grade silicon, the silicon has to be 99.9999999% pure. This means that in every 10 million atoms, there can only be one impurity. This calls for the Siemens process. The first step of the Siemens process is to obtain a gaseous form of silicon called trichlorosilicane. This is done by hydrochlorination of metallurgical grade silicon in a fluidized bed reactor. Essentially, powdered metallurgical grade silicon and hydrochloric gas is fed into the reactor and heated up to 300 degrees Celsius. This produces trichlorosilicane. This trichlorosilicane is then repeatedly condensed and distilled to remove impurities. The trichlorosilicane gas is then mixed with hydrogen gas and fed into a Siemens reactor. By the process of chemical vapor deposition, Silicon atoms are deposited onto a 1000 degree hot rod and hydrogen chloride is expelled at the outlet. The silicon deposited at the rod is now our solar grade silicon. So, now we finally completed phase 1 where we obtain solar grade silicon. Now comes phase 2, which is to turn solar grade silicon into silicon wafers. There are two different ways to process solar-grade silicon, depending on whether we are trying to produce monocrystalline or polycrystalline silicon. To produce monocrystalline silicon, the Tchaikovsky process is executed. 
For polycrystalline, the Bridgman process is performed. In the Tchaikovsky process, solar grade silicon is first melted in a crucible with the aid of heating coils. At this point in time, p type dopants such as boron are introduced into the melt. A seed crystal is then dipped into the melt and rotated upwards. The melt crystallizes at the seed crystal. With precise control of the speed and rotation of pooling, a p-type monocrystalline silicon is formed. This is called an ingot. In the Bridgman process, however, there is no need for a seed crystal. Instead, it is a much easier and direct process. Solar grade silicon feedstock is first contained in a crucible together with p dopants and then lowered into a chamber. The chamber is divided into two ovens, the upper oven for heating and melting, whereas the lower oven is for cooling and solidification. Hence, the feedstock will first melt in the upper oven, and then as the melt reaches the lower oven, the cooling process solidifies the molten silicon into solid P-type polycrystalline silicon ingots. Now that we have obtained our P-type monocrystalline or polycrystalline ingots, the next process is as simple as slicing the ingots into silicon wafers. This process is called wafering. Wafering is done by the wire saw process. The silicon ingot, for example, monocrystalline silicon, is fed into a wire saw. The rotating wire saw then slices the ingot into thin units of wafer. These wafer are the p-type absorber base of a solar cell, which is usually about 200 microns thick. So that's it guys for chapter 6.0. In chapter 6.0, we learned the first two phases of the solar panel manufacturing process, which is to turn quartz into silicon wafers. In the next video, which is chapter 6.1, we will cover phases 3 and 4, which is to transform silicon wafers into a commercial solar panel. Take care and goodbye.